The bridge is made of two parabolic steel arches, one forming the deck and the other supporting it, and they sit on concrete islands on either side of the river. On each island are bearings with pins passing through them. These connect to the base of the arch and allow the bridge to rotate 40 degrees. Deep inside the concrete end supports is what we call a paddle, which drops down from these pinpoints, uh, drops down vertically from these pinpoints, and to which are attached a bank of hydraulic rams, uh, three either side. In order to open the bridge, these hydraulic rams extend very slowly and rotate the, the whole structure. The deck that you walk upon is, is held up via cables from the arch. The arch is made of steel and uh, the cables are in tension. And the most important thing when we tilt the deck is that the cables have to remain in tension so that it pulls the deck with it. It's a very carefully engineered piece to make sure that the deck and the arch stay in the same relationship to each other. So it's actually remaining in balance when it's tilted. The bridge is powered by hydraulic rams, which push, and when they push, they tilt the bridge. As the bridge tilts open, the center of mass moves across the pivot point and the loads within the cylinders change to accommodate the shift in weight. When fully open, the cables between arch and deck lie perfectly horizontal. A bridge of this size requires a large and strong foundation. To begin construction, workers dredge the riverbed to remove mud and prepare for piling. A dry area was needed in order to lay the foundations, so temporary watertight enclosures called cofferdams or caissons were used to keep out the surrounding water. Successfully linking Newcastle to Gateshead, the bridge stands as an iconic symbol of modern engineering and design. <laughs>